Good morning, everybody. Today is going to be a really, really fun day. It is National Quilting Month, so we thought it would be the perfect time to show Alex how to make a mini quilt. <laughs> so Alex here <laughs> is new to our marketing department as well as new to sewing. So we figured what better to start with than a little mini quilt. So how are you feeling about this, Alex? I'm excited, a little <laughs> nervous, but very excited. <laughs> we did a little prep work yesterday, so we have some of it done, but we're gonna do some of the steps with you and we're just gonna have a fun time. Yep. So before we get started making our quilt, I would love to see where everybody's coming from today. I see a few comments already, so let's just pop those up. Good morning, Laura. I see you from upstate New York. Who else do we have on there, Brian? C. Lombard, hello, hello C. We've got Sherry, happy Thursday. It is Thursday, yes, <laughs> from Connecticut. Sharon Crawford, she's always watching. Thank you, Sharon. And we've got Janine from North Carolina. Thank you all so much. Uh, before we get started, I also want to let you know that we are going to be doing a giveaway at the end of this segment. So in order to get entered into the giveaway, all you have to do is comment. Super easy. And at the end, we'll do that giveaway. Yep. So Alex said she's feeling pretty good overall. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk about a few things that you need to get started with quilting, as well as just um, some of the things that you absolutely need and others that are just kind of handy but they would make your life a little bit easier. So in addition to that, we've got a couple of videos that we're going to show you and do a little bit of a tutorial base. And by the time you're done, we're gonna see hopefully at least the quilt ready to go to binding and possibly get the binding done as well. We'll see how ambitious we are, right yeah. Alex? <laughs> All right. So I know Alex mentioned that her mom might pop on. Has she, she popped is. on? Is she, she there? Her. Evie Hemmingson, that's her. Evie, right there. Yeah. Awesome. There's Evie. So that's Alex's mother. And guess what? I see mine too. There's my mom. Let's see. We got Kathy. Hi, mommy. Hello, moms. <laughs> we've, we've got our mother supporting <laughs> us. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and get started. And we're going to first pop up some things that we need. So let's get that little overlay here. Now, Right, we need a sewing machine. Now you can do this by hand if you want to. However, that sewing machine is gonna make your life a whole lot easier. <laughs> we need fabric and batting and some backing. We're going to go into more detail on what these actually mean. So Alex, if you're sitting there going, what does that mean? <laughs> I've got you, I'll explain to you in just a moment. We've got some good quality thread, a rotary cutter, a rotary mat, an iron, a pressing mat, some scissors, a quilty needle, a quarter inch presser foot, walking foot, adhesive spray, and some curved safety pins. Now, that may seem like a lot, uh, but like I said, not all of that is actually needed. It's just gonna make your life easier. So we're gonna go over some of the things that you absolutely need first. So Brian, if you don't mind putting the overhead camera on, we're gonna talk about presser feet first. All right, I'm just gonna switch on over here. And do you mind putting it so low for me? So it's nice and big, there we go. Okay, so let's talk about this zigzag presser foot first. Alex, can you see that okay? Yes. <laughs> all right, so this is your zigzag presser foot. It comes standard on all the sewing machines, unless it's a straight stitch machine, but on most of them, you're gonna get your zigzag presser foot. Now, this is, you can definitely use this for quilting, but it's standard to use a quarter inch seam allowance when you're quilting. So it makes it a lot easier if you use your quarter inch foot. Now you can either use a quarter inch foot like this. This one, as you can see, does not have a guide, but this little toe right here, you're able to put your fabric right there and you're able to get a perfect quarter inch seam. Now. If you're looking for even a little more help, I would suggest going with the quarter inch foot with the guide because you can butt your fabric right up against this guide and you are going to get the perfect quarter inch seam. So once again, don't fret. If you don't have these, just go ahead and use your regular foot. You would just have to set your needle to the appropriate spot in order to get your quarter inch seam allowance. Today we are going to use the quarter inch foot right here with the guide. 
And I'm going to hand this to Alex so she can swap it out on the machine. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about the walking foot as well. So let's have you do that. A walking foot is one that is optional, but it will make your life a whole lot easier. A walking foot is also called an even foot or a dual feed foot. What it does is it works in unison with the feed dogs on your machine. So you've got feed dogs on your machine and then you've got feed dogs essentially on the walking foot as well. And they work together to pull that fabric through evenly. So when you're quilting, because you're working with multiple layers of fabric, that's going to feed through nicely and not shift. So again, it makes it a lot easier and you get better results when you use a walking foot. But once again, don't fret. If you don't have one, you can always get started with just your zigzag foot. We're also going to be using some of these wonder clips later. Those are really handy, especially when you're putting binding on. And then we'll be using some pins. And then we also will be using some curved pins later. And I'll show you what those are all about. Okay. All right. We can go back to the other camera, Brian. Check the screen. Just like that. Kayla Quilts. Hello, Kayla. Hi, Kayla. <laughs> Kayla is actually going to be joining our So Creative Live event coming up on or April 4th through the 7th. She's going to be showing us how to do English paper piecing, which is going to be a really, really fun segment. So that's something that I haven't tried yet, and I'm really, really pumped to see how that goes. So let's go ahead and go to our step two. Now with step two, we're going to be cutting our fabric. You can use scissors, however, with quilting, you get a lot better results with using a rotary cutter and a rotary mat. If you don't feel comfortable cutting, you can always get pre-cuts like charm packs. That's totally fine as well. This right here, we've got some of the fat quarters. They measure 18 by 22 inches, so they're really convenient, especially if you're going to be making a mini quilt. You can cut those to size, but the charm packs, the one that I'm talking about, these are already pre-cut into five by five squares. So that's what we're going to be using today to get something similar to this result, okay? And like I said, you can use a pair of scissors, but it can be a little hard to get those straight lines. And precision is key when you're quilting and everything will come together nicely, um, especially when you cut everything nice and neat. Okay. When we talk about the rotary cutters, we have a bunch of different ones available. It's definitely a preference. I know some people really like the Quilter Select one because it's nice and heavy and feels good in your hand. Um, we also have a lot of the Fiskars options or the Ulfa. These are great. You can use all different sizes. Some people feel comfortable with the smaller one, but I would say probably the most common one's going to be your 45. So if you are looking to get a rotary cutter and a rotary mat, then I would look at going with the 45 for starters, and then you can always get different ones along the way. Okay. I had also mentioned that you can get your ironing board and your iron. So we have a variety of those available as well. If you don't have an iron available or you're maybe traveling and want to do some work, but you don't want to bring your iron with you, you can always use a seam roller for um, opening your seams, okay? All right, so we're going over some of the stuff we have. Are you like ready? You're just like I'm wanting to get bit. started. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so if you were cutting your fabric beforehand, you would have all your pieces prepped and ready to go. And depending on the style that you're wanting to go with, you know, you can have it big or small. These are gonna be five by five, so it's gonna end up being a pretty small mini quilt. But the next part, we're gonna talk about the arranging our fabric. So this one's easy. It's gonna be just laying your squares out in a pattern and have fun with it. I did a little video here of Alex playing around with moving her fabric around and making the rows. And uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and share that with you. And Brian, do you want to go ahead and play that for me? Sure. Thank you. Here we go. Yeah, we were having fun. She, <laughs> she went ahead and did all of the rows and we'll talk a little bit more about putting everything together too. Love it. Heavily concentrating there. <laughs> <laughs> No audio, <laughs> like in the zone. Okay, so 
as you're seeing with her doing her sewing, when you're putting your quilt together, you put it together in rows and then you combine those rows. So I'm gonna scooch over here really quickly. We can show what we have. You have, may I have you hold that corner for yeah. me? So she's already started her mini quilt. She's put together rows here and then you place them right sides together and so here to attach those rows. So if that makes sense, like that. Okay. So in order to create the rows, you take your squares, you're going to place them pretty side to pretty side. So you just place them like these. And then you are going to do a quarter inch seam allowance. And this is where that presser foot comes in really handy. So you get that perfect quarter inch seam. So since she's already started doing that, we're going to have practice a little bit on these pieces. So okay. we're going to do that next. And while she's getting that prepared, I'm going to see if we have some comments here. Love my Aliso iron. Aren't they the best? They're just such a cute little iron and comes with the handy dandy silicone resting plate. I love that. And it's actually the storage plate too, if you didn't know that. You can plop your iron right in there and then you can hang it. It's really convenient. We've got the big one too. Spectacular nails, Trisha. Thank you so much. You know, what's really funny, I just realized it matches my shirt. That was not intentional at all, <laughs> but I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> go girls, go get them, Alex. Chelsea, she's ready to go. <laughs> Chelsea. <laughs> she's ready to go. Already set up, perfect. So this quarter inch um, presser foot with the guide makes it so easy. She's just butting that fabric right up against the guide and going to town. See, she's already a pro. <laughs> we were playing with it yesterday and she's like, this is gonna really help me get familiar with my machine. I'm so. scared to break it, so scared. <laughs> you won't break it, you won't break it. Okay, so I'm gonna borrow that from you. So she just sewed her quarter inch seam allowance and now we are going to take the next one and we're gonna take pretty side to pretty side place those together and she'll do the quarter inch seam allowance again. I'm not gonna show you what I did. Here you go. Can you do that? Okay. <laughs> there we go. So this is a great way to get comfortable with quilting where you're just doing small squares, making rows and then putting those rows together. Now with getting that quarter inch seam allowance, you want to get as accurate as possible because when you put those rows together, it will come together nicely and you'll um, be nesting your seams, which we'll talk about a little in a little bit. Um, when you're nesting your seams, everything comes together nice and even when everything is the appropriate seam allowance. What sewing machine is she using? Now this is the Baby Lock Verve. However, it's been discontinued, but there is a replacement. It's called the Aurora. It's a sewing and embroidery machine. So it's a nice combination machine. There we go. Yeah, keep those comments coming, guys. Like I said, that will get you in the giveaway at the end. Okay, and perfect. Let's see, so this is what the row would look like. You would just continue to add as many squares as you want, have your width of your quilt. And then you would just make multiple rows and then we'll add those together. So now if you went ahead and made all your rows, I'm going to have Alex now connect her rows. So she did these three. We are going to now connect this row to her quilt. Okay. So this is where Wonder clips come in super, super handy. You can also use pins if you would like, but I find you get pretty good results with the, with the wonder clips. And when I say nesting seams, 
I was trying to get a video of it really, really up close so you could see what I mean, but I'm, here's my little picture. <laughs> I hope this explains, but you've got it where your fabric, your seam allowance, one is facing one way and the other is facing the other way and you butt that fabric up against each other and it fits together almost like a puzzle. So what Alex is doing right now is the nesting the seams. Now I can't remember it. Am I doing it like this? Right. Okay. Yep. And before we actually move forward, I do want to mention that when you're pressing your seam allowances, you want to press all to, you want to hold that side for me. There we go. One row all to one direction. And then the next one, all the other direction. And then same thing. You're pointing this way. So we're going this way, this way, this way. And then that allows these seams to nest together because one seam allowance is faced one direction and the other one is faced the other. So when she places this together, it'll be opposite. Okay. And then we can clip. Nice and neat. Love the apron on the mannequin behind you. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, we actually have a YouTube video on that particular one. I did a tutorial. It is a wonderful, wonderful pattern. And Brian, if you don't mind throwing that link for that pattern in the comments, you could try it out there. <laughs> it's a fun project. Very, very fun. Okay. We appreciate you all joining us on this Thursday. We are here in Tennessee. I think it's a little chilly. It was this morning. I don't know if it warmed up at all. Do you know? I think it's supposed to get in the 60s oh. later today. That's my kind of weather. 60s to Jeez. 65. As soon as it starts getting like 80, I'm like, <laughs> time to be hot. All right. How's the nesting going? With the practice yesterday, we got... We got the seam ripper out. Yes, we did. <laughs> Chelsea had mentioned that uh, she doesn't use her seam ripper. She uses her little embroidery scissors to pick the seams. I thought I had those cute little embroidery scissors around, but all right, we ready. So now that she's nested all the seams and have them clipped, she's going to do a quarter inch seam allowance along the whole edge. So I'm just going to pick that up so you can. So she'll do the quarter inch seam allowance all the way across, and then that means. Once she's done sewing it, she can open it up and everything is going to match nicely, just like that. Alrighty. Love the display of Aurifil thread, thread envy here. Oh, well, we have to thank Aurifil for this. They gifted us this beautiful, beautiful rack of thread and we are utilizing that today. So thank you. Thank you, Aurifil. It's a wonderful product. This is a 50 weight. I believe the orange spool is the 50 weight cotton. It's great. Great quality. Losing my thread here. All righty. This is where I got stuck yesterday. <laughs> I'm totally confident that she can do this. <laughs> I'm just going to put my name on the stork scissors in your studio. They're mine. <laughs> Chelsea's going to come do some recording with us, and she loves the stork ones. Actually, I see them over here. I'm going to grab them. <laughs> Chelsea, I'll put your name on them. <laughs> They're super cute. Just a little bit more. This is such a, such a great project to just get really comfortable. Not only with quilting, but with your machine as well. Looking good. And after we have this um, live, we'll go ahead and share this information too on our, on our website. And we'll do a blog about it too. So keep an eye out for that in the coming weeks. Got all these little little overlays with steps. So you can always go back and rewatch this and be able to make your own mini quilt.
Karen Miller from Orifil is joining us for So Creative Live on April 4th to talk about doing free motion quilting. She sure is. So we actually have quite a few fun guests for So Creative Live. We're gonna talk about that at the end today, but since we're already talking about it, let's get right into it because it's gonna be a really fun event. So if you're wondering what So Creative Live is, it's a virtual sewing event and we are inviting a bunch of guests. They're coming to do like sheen demonstrations and sewing techniques. We're gonna be doing a bunch of giveaways. So it's gonna be a whole lot of fun. Both Chelsea, who's on here right now, and Kayla, they're going to be joining us. We've got some other fun guests, too. How do we look? All right. Are your points matched up perfectly? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> they're looking wonderful. So normally, we would have this all pressed, um, and we would make sure everything's pressed nicely. Now, if you, again, you're traveling or you can't set up your iron, that seam roller is really nice. So if you want to lay that over there and press it to one side. Which side am I going? <laughs> this side? Yeah, I think it's that side. Yep. Let's make sure you can put a little pressure on it. Yeah, it's a great alternative. And while she's doing that, I was going to share this video of her pressing the rows. I'm going to add that quickly. There we go. She's having fun yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a good time. Using a very modernized iron. That thing's fancy. Yeah, that's the Laura Star. It is a wonderful piece. We recently became a dealer for it, so you'll see it on our website soon. Oh, I see some comments. Let's go in there while you're pressing. The seam roller Alex is using. Thank you, Rachel. I appreciate you sharing that. Awesome. Kayla said she's excited for So Creative Live. We're excited to have you, Kayla. Funny thing, I actually just got a little kit for English paper piecing, so I'm hoping to give it a try. <laughs> You're going to encourage me to do it. <laughs> we looking good? Yeah. All right. So what Alex created here is her topper. So this is going to be the top of her quilt. So what is a quilt, right? A quilt is going to be made up of three pieces. You've got your topper, which you just made, mm -hmm. and then we've got your backing and your batting. And so I'm gonna grab that if you wanna hold okay. that up. So we've got batting here. And that could be a whole nother live. <laughs> There's so many different kinds of batting, but this is the Hobbs um, batting. It is an 80-20, so it's 80% cotton and 20% polyester. It's a low loft, which just means it's not very high here. And then it also tells you in um, the product description about it, it'll tell you how close you need to sew together because you don't want it to like come apart or anything like that. This, is some backing fabric and it looks like it's white but it's actually a light pink so it's going to coordinate well <laughs> with her top and you just have the backing fabric it's going to be a coordinating color with your top you can pick all different ones we've got i need fabric uh, .com. they are our sister store you can get uh, custom printed ones there which is really really cool or you could do a solid and that works too nice. so when we're putting them together though at this point we are going to scooch this over. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is lay your backing fabric down. And I'm going to hold this for you. And then you put your batting. And then your top. There you go. Now this is called a quilt sandwich. I think that's a funny term, but it actually, it makes sense. You've got your two pieces of bread, your topper and your backing, and your batting is going to be your sandwich. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the meat of the sandwich, right? Oh, okay. And let me go ahead and pull this up here. You've got the quilt sandwich, so you can see that later. <laughs> okay. 
The next thing that we're going to do is pin or baste. So there are different ways that you can do this. You can use an adhesive spray. That works really well, but in my opinion, it's a little messy and you really need a very well ventilated area. But you can also use curved safety pins. So that's what we're going to do today. We are gonna use the curved safety pins. Give you that. And just talking about the adhesive spray, we do have the quilt basting spray here. And then we also have the Sulky KK2000. And you literally just do like a light mist. Just for the purpose of demonstration, I do wanna show you, when you are using these, it's easiest to do it like in half. So let's say you're gonna be doing this half. We're gonna fold it back and then fold the backing or the batting, excuse me, and you would do a light mist and then you would place your batting back just like that and then take your basting spray, do another light spray and then fold this and even everything out nicely. Once you've completed one side, then you'd go ahead and do the other. So you would just fold this back, fold this one back, light spray, Pop it down, light spray, and then place that on top, just like that. Now with the, with the basting spray, I'm going to give you this little tip right now because this happened to me. I used this stuff and I could not get it off my hands. Like oh. I could not. Yeah. So I actually went to Facebook and made a post and said, please, does anybody, <laughs> does anybody know how to get this stuff off? And lo and behold, I did have somebody help me in olive oil. Okay. Olive oil took it right off. Okay. So olive oil does a lot of tricks. If you use that. <laughs> so in this particular case, we are gonna go ahead and use the curved pins. And they are exactly what they sound like. Brian, would you mind doing the overhead pin, or the overhead pin, excuse me, <laughs> the overhead camera, and I'm gonna show a close-up of these pins. There we go, there we go. They are curved, just like that. So what that does, it makes it easy to pick up your fabric, and that curve makes it easy that you're not trying to work your way have a hard time working your way through. Gotcha. There we go. I think I need another cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right. So this is, um, people have different, different opinions on how uh, close you need to pin. I usually like to do every block. It's probably every a little block. excessive, but that's my preference. Kayla, Chelsea, do you have a preference? <laughs> I hope I got all three layers. Make sure we have them. Yeah, and when doing your backing and your batting, you want to have at least a couple of inches extra around the whole quilt top. This, we have a little extra room, but personally, I don't mind laying everything on top and then getting it pinned and then trimming just so I know I won't be short. So either way is fine as long as you have extra around all the way around. I see now what that one girl meant at QuiltCon with the quick clips. It was oh, for this. There you go. To use that for. There you go. Love this technique to spray the adhesives. Yes, it works so great. It's just I had such a hard time getting it off my hands. But olive oil fixed everything. So, yeah, great product. And in our studio here, we don't have any windows, so... I wouldn't feel comfortable doing it since it's not a very well ventilated area. But if you have a well ven ventilated area, wonderful. Yeah, we're gonna just put that on there. Olive oil. <laughs> I even tried lemon oil. Because lemon, lemon oil, if you ever have like sticky on jars or anything like that, like when you remove the sticker and it's just all gunky, lemon oil works hmm. really, really well. I got sidetracked. <laughs> so far, so good. And while she's putting the pins on here, let's talk a little bit about quilting the top. So when you're quilting, I should say time to quilt. 
Um, when you're quilting, you can do this several different ways. You can use a technique of using like painter's tape. So you can put the tape across and I'll show you that in just a moment. And then just sew right next to it. That way you don't have to mark any lines. You can also use the walking foot with a guide bar and you can also use a stitch in a ditch foot. So you can actually sew right between the seams so you don't see your, your stitches. So we'll talk about both, all three of those as soon as we're done clipping everything. <laughs> You're doing awesome. <laughs> You're like, it's coming along. <laughs> it's coming along. <laughs> oh, yeah. And when we we're talking about So Creative Live, please make sure that you tune in because Chris Martini with Rose City Originals, he's going to be doing a quilt or quilting 101. And he has an amazing PDF that he put together and goes through all the steps. And that's going to be available during the event. And you'll be able to put your quilt together. So. He did a great job on that. He I, really did. For someone who doesn't know how to do this, I was very impressed <laughs> with his steps. It was great. It was a good time. I should have asked him, hey, Chris, can I use your instructions? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I should have done. <laughs> I'm like, hey, Chris. Oh. Just remember, guys, we're going to do a giveaway at the end. So all you have to do is comment. So just let us know where you're coming from or any tips you have on quilting would be awesome. Kayla does a hand width apart. I'm going to put that up there. So spacing her pins, she said she puts them a hand width apart. I know it's excessive, but it keeps everything from moving. That's kind of how I feel, too. I would rather be like error on the side of caution and make sure that it's not going to move on me. Love that. Better extra pins than a date with Jack the Ripper. Sherry, uh, you are so right. <laughs> we had a date yesterday. I yeah. wouldn't say it was very romantic. <laughs> it was a date, that's all. That's right. That's yeah. all. I'll take it. <laughs> oh. C Lombard. You love Chris. Yay! We love Chris too. New dice to learn the technique he uses. That's awesome. Looking forward to seeing that, yeah. Donna, we are so pumped for So Creative Live Spring Social because we have so many fun guests. We have four days this time, so we've got lots of guests. Some are like returning and other ones are brand new. So make sure that you check that out. I like using fusible batting. Beth, you know what? I've not used that yet. I'm going to have to give it a try. Fusible batting. Maureen also likes the basting spray. Okay, am I the only one that had the issue of getting it off my hands? <laughs> I think I must have. <laughs> I was stressing out because I was at home. I'm like, what am I doing wrong? I can't get this off. <laughs> oh. Last one. Oh, you're doing your first quilt, a crib quilt. Perfect. That's perfect. Okay. If you want to, you can join our Facebook group if you're not already on it because you can share pictures. I would love, love, love to see your quip, uh, your quib <laughs> and not talk today. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, this live is great. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Alex is doing wonderful. She's going to have the perfect quilt. <laughs> Do you have it all done? Yes. I all right. Is it okay if like one doesn't yeah. go through? Should we'll be fine. So... As I had mentioned, you want at least two inches extra around. So let's hold this up together. Okay. So just so you can see a little bit easier. So I don't mind having the backing. So again, backing, batting, top. So I don't mind having this all larger and then place my top on and then trim it. Again, you are welcome to cut it beforehand, but I'd rather err on the side of caution. So I'm gonna have Alex cut around here just to get rid of some of the bulk when we go to baste it. And basting just means that we're gonna take a long stitch and we're gonna go around the edge. And this does not have to be fancy because it's going to be covered by the binding, but um, it holds everything in place and it doesn't let your quilt accidentally like fold over or anything like that. So we'll talk about that in the settings on our machine as soon as you're done trimming. Okay. So here. You can either use the scissors or 
your rotary cutter. Um, how much do you want me to trim? Let's do about two inches two or inches. so away, all the way around. And again, it does not have to be perfect. You just want to chop off the bulk. Cynthia Edwards wants to know what fusible batting is. A fusible batting is going to have an adhesive on one side, and then you would be able to use an iron to press it, and that adhesive is going to melt and hold to your fabric. So I'm so sorry I don't recall the name of the person that just made that comment. Oh, Beth. Thank you, Beth. She likes using the fusible batting. So I've not used the fusible batting, but it's inspired me. I would want to give it a try, and I'll have to make another mini, mini quilt and see if I like that product. I'm sure it's wonderful. I love using the fusible stabilizer for purses, and it's very similar, except it's a, instead of being batting like this, you're gonna have more of a foam style and then the adhesive on one side. So I've used that and love it. Looking good, Alex. Thanks, Treasure. <laughs> <laughs> Is the uh, batting fusible only on one side? Uh, there are dual sides on other products like the stabilizer, but since I've not used the the batting fusible one, I would have to look into that and see if that's the case. Rachel, if you're watching, she's our product specialist. She could take a peek and see if we have a dual sided fusible batting for quilting. Oh, thank you guys all for commenting. I love your comments and questions. Squeaky scissors. <laughs> Right. Okay, like so I just have to say, although I absolutely love these, they're not my favorite because my favorite are the ginger, the dressmaker shears. Mm. They're smooth and they're not squeaky, but these are pretty. <laughs> so I like using them because they're pretty. <laughs> so that's why. Yeah, and they match the the embroidery scissors that we set aside for Chelsea. Oh yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> they were all a, a kit that I had. Little tweezers, the scissors. Yeah, they're pretty fun. Okay, so now I'm gonna just lift this up again. So we're at the point, can you hold that corner? Yes. So we're at the point that we're going to actually quilt the quilt, right? So I had mentioned that we can do like straight line sewing. You can also use a stitch in a ditch foot to actually stitch within the seam, or you can use that walking foot. So again, the walking foot is super, super handy to help avoid shifting. Now you put the pins in here, right? So that's going to help you not shift around, but I think we should go ahead and change it out for the walking foot. I think that sounds great. Does that sound like a good idea? I okay. myself. <laughs> We're going to do it. <laughs> and I'm actually going to help you on this one because we've okay. not played around with the walking foot much. Do you want to go to the overhead cam, Brian? Thanks. So the reason that I want to mention this before I go over to the machine is you can see that little arm right here, right? And that has to go around the needle clamp screw. And as your needle goes up and down, this moves up and down. And that is going to move these little feed dogs that are attached to the walking foot. And then the feed dogs on your machine are going to work in unison with the feed dogs on the walking foot and pull that fabric through really, really nicely. So I'm going to show you this right now because you can't really see it as I attach it, but I'm going to put that around that screw. And it's just a, just a little tricky here. So I'm gonna show you this okay. and then have you use it. Weak. I'm gonna scooch in here. So this is gonna be a screw on one before she had swapped out the foot. It's a little snap on foot. We're actually gonna remove the shank or this presser foot holder altogether. So we're gonna take our little screwdriver and remove that. Super easy. Snap on feet are so nice, but once in a while you just need that screw on foot. So again, we're gonna come behind here, put that little claw. There we go. Put the little claw over. Gonna release the screw just a smidge more. And this is a lot easier than I'm making it look. <laughs> There we go. And then slide up into that U channel on the foot. And now we can tighten it down. 
I usually do it like finger tight, not all the way. And then I lower my presser foot and then finish tightening it. It just seems to be positioned properly then. So now we'll lower it down and then finish tightening it, just like that. Okay, any time, oops, where'd those wonderful tweezers go? There they are. Here we are. Anytime we attach a new foot, you always want to double check where the needle's going to land by slowly rotating your hand wheel towards you and lowering that needle down. And that way you can stop before it hits the foot if it's the incorrect foot for your machine. Mm. If you ever have any issues determining whether or not your foot is compatible, give us a call. We are happy to help you find a compatible foot for your machine. Rachel got back to us. On which one? There is double-sided double -sided, uh, fusible batting. That's great. Fabulous. And then she also recommended fusible powder by Fulter Select. Oh, I've seen that product, but I haven't tried it yet. Fusible powder. Yes. So it's like powder that you... Yeah. Um, Brian, would you mind pulling that up on our website yeah. and just showing that product while I finish this here? And then does it just like dissolve into the fabric? It's a temporary adhesive, I believe. And... Yeah, let's get the details pulled up because I don't want to guess. <laughs> I don't want to guess. <laughs> so it comes in a little dispenser. It's a dispenser, and then you shake the powder on there. Here, we have the video. Do you want to watch it? Yeah, sure. See what it says. We're all learning something new today. <laughs> I don't think you can hear it, but they can. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we'll have to share that on our Facebook afterwards and you can watch the entire thing. Brian, would you mind making a note of that? Yeah, we can share it on our Facebook. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Thanks for the suggestion, Rachel. <laughs> okay, so now we've swapped out for the walking foot and again, Anytime you swap out a foot, you always want to lower your needle and make sure that it does not hit the presser foot. So we are okay. And also anytime you switch, I always like to take a piece of scrap fabric and just run it through, make sure everything is working properly before you move on to your actual project, right? Okay, okay. so I'm gonna have you scooch over here okay. and we're gonna do a little test sewing with the walking foot. A couple of things about a walking foot, you don't want to sew at a fast pace. Make sure that you turn it down uh, to either, actually probably between slow and medium, and that's going, going to work well. Oh. And don't you love a machine that tells you what to do? <laughs> yeah, that was nice. So lower your presser foot. I see why it's called a walking foot. Yep. So now it's just going to do the work for you. You just have to nicely guide it. And I think we'll be okay to turn it up just a smidge more. When I say turning it up, this is the speed control option on this machine. Not every machine has that option. You may have to control your speed with your foot control. Um, but with the speed control on the machine, you can put it to a specific setting and then you can hit your foot control all the way down you don't have to worry about going too fast. It's only gonna go as fast as you set it. Very nice. Okay, so our stitches look pretty. They look pretty. All right, may I see here? Okay, and you now this is something I forgot to mention. So before when we were doing this, um, we lowered the stitch length on the piecing to a two. So at this point now, we can actually bump it up to about a 2.5. Okay. And so if you wanna change the setting on your machine, we're gonna do that. So when you're using the short stitch length to put your pieces together, that's beneficial because you're gonna have those nice short stitches so it doesn't come apart easily. And then when you're doing the more, the bigger, oop, I was like, what do we do? <laughs> I was like, what do we do? <laughs> um, the bigger stuff, then it's okay to do like a 2.5 for your stitch length. You want me to make another one? Sure. Okay, we'll test it out. It's not gonna hurt anything if you did the, the shorter stitch length, but. 
Don't run away from me. <laughs> it's running away. It is. Running away. Can we get an explanation of the difference between a walking foot and a stitch in a ditch foot? Wonderful. So I could definitely help you with that. While she's doing that test run, Brian, do you mind swapping over to the overhead camera? I actually did grab a stitch in a ditch foot. Let me see if I can make a pretend thing here. Let me grab a couple of things. So let's say, I'm gonna do it this way. I'll show you this here in a second. I'm gonna use my binding example. <laughs> So let's just say we were putting our pieces together and we did our quarter inch seam allowance and then this is our piece, right? And here's our seam on the top of our quilt. So that is this right here where the two fabrics come together. With a stitch and a ditch foot, you have this great little guide right in the middle. So it's going to be in line with your needle and then when you're sewing, and you're quilting, I should say, because you're going to be quilting your top. You're going to put that guide in your seam and then you're going to sew. That needle's gonna come down right on that seam line. So it's essentially hiding it within the seam. That's your stitch in a ditch foot. The walking foot, as I mentioned, that is intended to help you avoid shifting. So it's going to have the feed dogs on the, walk, the walking foot and then it works in unison with the feed dogs on the machine. Just like that. Okay. We can switch back to the other one. Thank you, Brian. All right. Do we look pretty? Looks pretty. Okay. So we were talking about a few things that you can do for your quilting. So one option is going to be quilter's tape. This is if you really, really don't want to draw any lines or anything like that, you just want something to follow, you could place your piece of tape, let's just grab a piece like this, and we could place it wherever we wanted to go. Let's say it was diagonal. We could go from these points on our squares and make sure it's all lined up just like this. And we would be able to bring it to the sewing machine and sew directly next to it. And then you have a guide, you don't have to worry about drawing anything, right? Very easy. You can also reuse the tape. So after you've done a line, you can pull this off and then go to your other points and be like, I'm going to come through that intersection. Place the tape there and sew along that way. If you're looking to do it really simple, you could swap out for that stitch in a ditch foot. And I'm just gonna set that tape so we can reuse it. You could swap it out for the stitch in a ditch foot. Let me have you hold that side. And then you could put the guide right in the seam and follow along here. And then you wouldn't be able to see the stitches on the top. Now, it depends on the look you're going for, right? You might want to see the stitches come across diagonally, or you may want to do like little, little stitches too, just straight line stitching. So you can just have a lot of fun with it. It's a really preference. So Alex? What's your preference? What um, would you like to do? I'm feeling a little quirky. Let's do a diagonal. Okay, let's go ahead and do it. <laughs> I like that. So we're not gonna swap it out for the stitch in a ditch foot. We are going to leave the walking foot on because then it's gonna help avoid that shifting. And I am going to have you place some tape. Okay. We're gonna make it nice and easy. Once we get the tape, it'll be yeah. nice and easy. <laughs> this is the hardest part of the whole thing. Goodness. I just wanted to throw this comment up to show that you can get a walking foot with a stitch in the sole. Yes, actually, I have that somewhere. Let's see. For this particular machine, I do have that option, and I'll show you an example of that. You want to go to the overhead camera, Brian? Okay, so what she was talking about is an interchangeable sole. This particular one, that walking foot that's already attached to the machine, you can swap out the sole to do the stitch in a ditch. See how it has that guide right in the center? So that's gonna align with your needle if you have it in center needle position. This one here you can swap out and it has an open toe. So an open toe is really nice 
because you'll be able to see what you're doing a little bit better. So let's see what we have. And not every single walking foot has this option, but generally we can find one. It may, excuse me, it may be a generic option for your machine, but usually we have something that we can get for you. Okay, so we did the first line. How does it yeah. work? Everything's straight. lined up with the corners. Okay, so let's go ahead and start on that end. I'll okay. have you sit down. All right. This is a wonderful option if you're just wanting um, to quilt something, but you maybe don't have a ruler or marking tools because you could get really particular and make it nice and straight and have all these beautiful marked lines too using a ruler. That's a fun tool as well, but we can also grab the painter's tape from our man's garage, right? I like it. <laughs> now, am I going to start here or back here? I like to start a little bit off the quilt, but um, we didn't baste. Oh. I forgot to have you baste. Okay, let's back up for a quick, quick second. Okay. So I'm just going to show you the explanation on it here. So okay. if we come this way, we're going to put a basting stitch around the whole edge of it, or okay. at least one side so you guys get the idea of that. So a basting stitch is a temporary stitch. So what we want to do oh. is increase that stitch length to the longest stitch option that you have, stitch length option that you have. There we go. Okay. And hit OK. So on this machine, it's a five millimeter stitch. It just means that that stitch length is gonna be pretty far apart and they're easy to pull out if needed. Okay. When doing a basting stitch, you don't do a reverse at the beginning. You just get started. So on this one, I'm going to have you pull it over a little bit more. We're gonna go past the tape since okay. we made an oopsie there. <laughs> and we're just gonna do close to the edge. Okay. This is going to be hidden within the binding. So as long as it's close to the edge, you don't have to be too particular. It doesn't have to be a specific distance away, but you can just tack it down essentially. I'm just gonna have you do the one side for now. Okay. And remember, just let the machine do the work for you. And good. And then just stop for a second. If you need to stop, there's nothing wrong with that. Just straighten your fabric out a little bit and kind of Hold it right there. There you go. And guide it with your left hand. Perfect. And let the machine do the work. Looks good. I love it. Huh? Okay, let's stop for just a second. See how the fabric's coming up onto the foot a little bit? Yeah. That's not a problem. All you have to do is stop and then lift up your presser foot. Okay. And then kind of tuck that fabric back underneath the foot. There you go. And then lower your presser foot. Is it okay that some of that, I think it did catch? I think you're good. We're just gonna baste the one side. Now, normally you would baste all, all the way around. Oh, we're losing track a little bit. So you still wanna be oh, just yeah. on the edge. How do I get back over there? Yep, just kind of move your quilt just a smidge that way and you'll it'll bring you back over this, this direction. Okay. There you go. Wonderful. Okay. And cut it. Yep. Perfect. Oh. <laughs> A little wonky. Almost perfect. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. That's right. Okay. So all that's doing is tacking it into place. So then when she's quilting, it's not going to catch. That's the purpose. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> so now we are going to follow that piece of tape and make it all party. I'm glad that we practiced with them. Yeah, right? <laughs> awesome. And after you have that set up, I'm going to have you scooch for just a quick second. I want to show you something. Alrighty. 
All right. So, as I had mentioned before, this is a combination machine. It is a sewing and an embroidery machine. You can also get sewing and quilting machines. A benefit for a quilting machine is it has a large throat space. So that just means the distance from your needle to the machine. The reason that's beneficial when quilting is because if you're doing a big quilt, you need space for your, your quilt to be rolled up like a these. Mm. So you have all this bulk on the side, right? Mini quilt, no problem at all. This is gonna work perfectly. But if you were doing a big quilt, this is not enough space for that. Makes sense. So that is one reason why you can get a sewing and quilting machine. And I'm gonna sneak that right next to it for you. And then plop it down, okay. Okay, there we go. So as I mentioned, we roll up that fabric so it's out of the way. That will prevent you from catching it on the machine and having your fabric shift on you. Okay. So again, you wanna have this kind of up okay. and get you sitting. You can get comfortable. And then we will just follow that tape. Alrighty. And don't worry about going you know, a little on the slow side. It, let's take our time. We're using that walking foot. So again, we do not want to sew at a fast pace and we're not going over the tape. That's just there for a guide. We want to go right next to it. Looks good. All right, let's take a look and see if we have some questions while you're sewing. Kayla mentioned that <laughs> okay that you're thinking on getting the binding foot but cannot wrap your head around how it works. We're going to go over that foot. I do not have one in the studio, but I'll make a note to do a little video on it because it's really, really cool. Brian, do you mind making me a little note that we can do a video on the binding foot? Sure. Thank you. I'm going to want to take that safety pin out, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm going to have to, can I lift this? Yep. Okay. If you need to, go ahead and hit the scissors if we okay. need to. This is called troubleshooting. <laughs> That's no problem at all. So let's go ahead and take that pin out. There we go. Maybe I'll have to get one. I'm just looking through the comments here. Pamela Tinkle, you just might be in the market for a new machine. Well, give us a call. We're happy to help. We'll figure out which one's best for you. She might want to wait till April. Yeah, Brian just mentioned you might want to wait till April. We have a ton of amazing deals coming during the So Creative Live. Going to be a whole lot of fun. We've got Janome, Juki, Baby Lock. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I'm all about. It's not going to be displayed this time on our So Creative Live, but I absolutely love my Janome Memorycraft 8200 QCP SE. It's a long name, <laughs> but that's a quilting cool machine. It has an 11-inch throat space. Wonderful, and it has a one-button needle plate changer. So you just hit the button, your needle plate pops off. No worried about no worrying about screws or anything. So it's it's really cool. We also have the Baby Lock Allegro, which is an awesome quilting machine. Looking good. So how do you like following the tape? I like it. I think that's a good one. Yeah, I'm trying to not sew the tape into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But yeah, I think that's a, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we want to stop for just a quick second. Okay, I'm going to just place that on real life, people. <laughs> there we go. The thread's just too excited. <laughs> Me too. Me too. It's like I'm Orophil. I'm awesome. <laughs> this is probably not going to be the straightest line. It's okay. This is Alex's first quilt, you guys. She's doing an amazing job. <laughs> she really is. Donna. Yes, exactly, Donna. She just said, Alex, kudos for doing new stuff live. 
Oh, Kudos, okay. Alex. <laughs> Thank you. She's wonderful. Okay, so I note to self, stop a little before the safety pin <laughs> if you want to take it out. I'm going to have to cut it again. That's all right. If we do a tutorial on this, we'll have it laid out nicer for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're, an amazing you're doing teacher. a wonderful job. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. You're so sweet. Oh yeah, and I do have the overlays. I actually may put them up at the end and just put them individual one, two, I think it's through 10 or 11 steps. That way, if I didn't show all of them, you'll still have that where you can go back and go to the steps and walk yourself through making nice. your mini quilt. My intention was to share all of them. <laughs> One of my favorite tools in my sewing room are these curved tweezers that Alex is using right now. I use them constantly. Between that and my sewing gauge, two of my favorite tools. Nothing fancy, but ones I use all the time. I would absolutely love to hear what your favorite sewing tools are. <laughs> you can throw them in the comment. Tell me what you love. I want to see. Oh, I had just seen a question. Where'd it go? Oh, you guys are doing great. You're commenting so fast. They're going away that I didn't see what it was. Where's the one on the Juki? If you offer... She wanted to know if there was an open toe sole uh, for the walking feet for Juki. Oh, we Rachel can... said she's going to do some research. I was just about to say the same thing. Thank you, Rachel. Oh, talking about the tape. Yes, that is just a painter's tape that you can use to help make a guide. This is a great alternative. If you don't have a ruler or marking tool, you can still place the tape to have something to follow. Did it right this time. <laughs> Figuring it out. Yeah, I should have explained that part a little bit more for you. Oh no. Yeah, the other nice thing is let me see if I have that box, yeah. This particular walking foot comes with the guide bars and it's hard to explain while it's on the machine, but you can slide this bar um, depending on the style. This one actually you attach with the screw, but it attaches to the back of your walking foot and then you're able to place your guide bar on a previously sewn line. So if you didn't have the painter's tape, you could just sew your straight line and then you would be able to install this and put this guide on that previously sewn line and continue doing that and you get nice straight lines. I actually love using the guide. Okay, let's stop before we get to the pin. <laughs> Teamwork! <laughs> I don't know why, but this reminded me of the Titanic and yelling ice. <laughs> straight ahead! <laughs> Brian's the one that's great with movie quotes. <laughs> <laughs> I still think that Titanic is my second favorite movie of all time. Mm. Even Chelsea I was just going to say, Chelsea, how do you feel about that? <laughs> She's not a fan. So you've heard me say Chelsea a couple of times. She's a great friend. She lives about an hour away. She, uh, We met her through So Creative Live, actually. She had watched one of our original lives and then she ended up coming to our store and getting a couple of machines and from there we struck a friendship and she's filmed here with us she's joining us for so creative live we just love having her in our life so she's probably out doing stuff now but chelsea we love you <laughs> all righty there we go. You did your first line of quilting i did beautiful so now you can reuse the tape so as we I'll have one here. Let's see if we are right next to it, if any of it <laughs> was stitched down. 
<laughs> okay, so we're gonna pull that off. <gasps> Alex, it's beautiful. Oh, like it's, it's, it's beautiful. Like. So <laughs> there we go. We've got one line of stitching. Can you see that on camera? Isn't that cute? So now we can do that throughout. If you wanna hold that up, yeah. I'll show you here. So we're going to place the tape now through these intersections. So she'll have that nice diagonal coming through this direction. Now you can do what you would, whoops, I'm gonna come this way. Can we scooch over just a yeah. smidge? That way it'll be on camera here. You can choose to do the diagonal just once through these intersections like this, or you can come back and do them this way. So you make a fun pattern, or you can come back through and use a stitch in a ditch and go within the seam. So you said you're feeling quirky, right? You're gonna yeah. play around with it. Yeah. So we've got this diagonal. Do you wanna go ahead and do it right here? Sure. Okay. Let's do that. I'll give you the tape, you can reuse that. And let's let's move the pins because they're right in the center. So let's scooch them to the side a little bit beforehand and That's a great save, idea. save you some trouble. I like that. Everybody can get a cup of coffee. <laughs> Grab yourself a cup of coffee or a pop. You would ask what everybody's favorite notion is. It seems like stiletto is the most common. Stiletto is wonderful. Ah, I guess that is one of my favorite tools too. I said my, my tweezers, my gauge, but I also love the Alex Anderson tool. This is an awl, a seam ripper, mm. point turner and a seam press. So it's a great handy little tool, but an awl is wonderful. But I always joke, cause I have a hard time saying that word, awl, awl. <laughs> I probably look really funny every time I say that. <laughs> All righty. Looks good. All right. She's a pro. She's ready to do, a, do another it. line. <laughs> I'm start selling these <laughs> on eBay. It's gonna look beautiful. <laughs> oh no wait that's not gonna so you could roll it up and then start at the top and oh. feed it feed it under or you can just move it under first and then roll it just watch out for those pins safety pins what is the stitch length when you're quilting we're doing a 2.5 right now and um when you're doing your piecing, when you're doing your top, you can do a 1.8 or a 2.0. Oh, Great question. I gotta, I gotta thread my needle. It came out of there. Alrighty. So, so with the walking foot attached, let's go ahead and actually do it with the tweezers. Okay. Boink. I'm gonna scooch over here so I'm not leaning over you. We'll plop this down. Let's see if we can do it with the. I can't see the cutter. Can you cut that off for me? Yes. Okay. We're just going to pl place the presser foot down. Just double check and see if it's in the way. Nope. Okay. We're fine. I was just wondering if the walking foot attached would be too much for it, but we're good. There you go. Nice. Thank you. You're welcome. And then you can place the presser foot up and feed that through. Yeah, and if you place the tweezers closer to the edge of your thread, it's easier to get it under the foot. So a lot of presser feet have the slit in the center, so you can easily bring your thread back and under the foot. This particular foot, um, it has a guideline on there, no slit. So we have to feed the thread through and bring it back. Whereas the sole plate that's an open toe we could have changed that out and had it where you could see better and be able to easily bring your thread back. So it just depends on which application you want to use it in. All right, let's take a look at some of these comments. You guys are doing great and everybody's getting entered into that giveaway at the end. Oh, you've got the Skyline S3. Those are wonderful machines. The S3, the S5, the S7, they're all great. Wonderful models. We have a ton of different presser feet for them too. So 
stitch in a ditch if you're looking for it or a walking foot. I see people saying the stiletto is their favorite. Oh. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> You've got this. Uh, okay. Trish said her favorite sewing tool is the six by 24 ruler used for batting cutting. That's awesome. So this ruler that I have here is, a, whoops, excuse me, is the eight and a half by I think 24. Yeah, this is the eight and a half by 24. I really like this one too. It's a, it's a great one that you can do a lot of stuff with. It's nice and long if you're doing big cutting or if you need to do something small. I also like little rulers like this one. This is great for like if you're doing your binding, which I'll show you here in just a moment. So all different sizes are handy dandy. Ruler gauge, yes, that's a great tool. Racer Girl says a rotary cutter is her favorite. Rotary cutters are amazing. We have so many different sizes as well. This one is a 60, this one's a 45. Got this one here that's a 45. And I think this one's the 18. We also have a 28. I like the 28. I use that one a lot at home. If I'm doing bag making, for some reason, I find it easier for me to use. We also have a new product. I believe it's by Creative Grids where it's um, the 45 millimeter rotary cutter and a case. It's a really nice set too. Ah, Brian's on his game. He's got it for me. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, it's a really cool set. Really, really popular. <laughs> have you guys tried to open cases? Actually, this one looks like it's good. You know those plastic cases where you end up cutting your hands? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, like, I think this one would be fine. You but... need scissors to open a pair of Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're doing great, Alex. Thanks, Trisha. This one went a little butter. I like your idea of moving, moving the, the pins. pins. We're going to think through the, our steps, right? <laughs> This is just teaching us what not to do, right? Next time you sit in front of the machine to make your mini quilt, you're going to be like, those pins are not going there. Yeah. <laughs> Racer girl, worst scissor cutter. There's nothing wrong with that. Rotary cutter and mat, it is. <laughs> oh. Let's see, does anybody else have any questions? I'm not sure what this means, but. We're oh, that. I was just reading that one. So um, with that automatic bobbin threader. Okay, so the automatic bobbin threader, the one that she used on this machine, it um, does the top thread. But the bobbin thread, you have to bring up manually. Now you want to check your manual because some machines, you don't have to bring up the bobbin thread, others you do. This particular machine, we do go ahead and bring up that bobbin thread and pull the top thread and the bobbin thread back and under, or I should say under the foot and back. I hope that answers that question. And Rachel just shared a link for the ruler I was holding up. Love that ruler. The creative grids with the case. Here we go. Okay, we've got somebody saying she could speed up. So there's a couple of reasons behind that. So we, we are using the walking foot right now. It's really important when using a walking foot not to go too fast. We actually got calls in customer service. I used to be in customer service. Um, but one of the problems was that the walking foot wasn't working properly. But if we read the instructions on them, you do want to slow down. So we don't want to, A, ruin her quilt, two, ruin the foot. So we're just going to take our time and... Um, Finish the quilt. We only have a few more lines to do and then we'll talk about the binding. And we did some pre-made binding, so we'll speed it up once we get to that point. We like to say it's called a walking foot, not a running foot. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Brian, was that you? I stole it from somebody. <laughs> That sounded like something Brian would say. I'm like, I love that. 
Mm. So walk, don't run. Exactly, Marsha. <laughs> we want it to turn out. And just a reminder, this is Alex's first quilt. She's doing this live with you guys. This is awesome. <laughs> There you go. Pins are moved. You are good. It's going to look so cute. Told my daughter she can have this for her baby doll. That is going to be perfect. Yeah, this particular one I was playing with at home too. So I did some straight line quilting on it. I just Use my Juki TL2010Q. That's a quilting machine, but you can also use it for garment sewing and bag making. It's a really great machine. Now that particular machine, the TL2010Q, is a straight stitch machine. So I can't move my needle or do anything like that. So, but what it does have is it's just a wonderful, powerful machine and it works really, really great for quilting and bag making. And if you want to go ahead and switch to the overhead camera, Brian, while she's doing that, I'll talk about some needle options. When we're quilting, we want to make sure that we're using the appropriate needle. A couple of really, really good options would be the quilting needle or the Microtex needle. The difference is that the tips are slightly different than like your universal or ballpoint needle. It just penetrates the multiple layers of fabric really nicely. So you don't have that thumping noise and it just goes through your fabric really nice. You don't get skip stitches or anything like that. And if you're just popping on, we were talking about the feet. So currently Alex is using a quarter inch foot and it has the guide on the side of the foot. This one is a regular quarter inch foot. It does not have the guide. I also like this foot, but I find that it takes a little practice. I would start with the um, quarter inch foot with the guide if you're brand new, but if you feel pretty comfortable and feel like you're not going to, you know, sway or anything, you can use this foot and follow, place the fabric against this toe right here. And that's going to give you a perfect quarter inch foot, or excuse me, a perfect quarter inch seam allowance. And then once we get to doing binding, we're going to be using these wonder clips. These are a really great product. They just have a little spring action in them and they hold the binding in place for us. It's much easier than pinning, I find. You know what I found out yesterday about them? What's that? There's measurements on the back. Oh yeah. I never use them, but I have seen or I did see in the description that it has a type of measurement on it. What does it say in the description, Brian? Is it like eighth of an inch and a quarter inch, I'm assuming? Um, or quarter inch? Let me pull it up. I saw it on TikTok. Somebody shared something about it. Yeah, they do have measurements. We'll have to look at the description. We have it on our website. I know we do. Because again, Rachel's awesome and she puts those details in there for you. <laughs> Four seam allowance marks between three sixteenths and a half inch. Okay, sweet. Those are Wonder Clips. There's a variety of um, clips available. I believe there's also the Magic Clips, but so far my preference has been the actual Wonder Clips. Thank you for sharing those, Rachel. All right, we have one more line down. <laughs> Just got the two. Two oh, no. more lines. Yeah, two little ones. Let's see, Barbara, you said you love an iron that stays hot and small rulers. I like that. Somebody earlier said they love a seam gauge, which I know is like your favorite. Yes, I do love a good seam gauge. <laughs> but this seam gauge right here, there's some fancy ones, but this particular one I absolutely love. It's got a little bit of flexibility to it. So I find that I'm constantly placing it on my project and kind of almost pushing it and making sure that my measurement is correct. So I love this thing. There's also one that's a harder, like an acrylic that doesn't bend, but I like the flexibility of this particular one. At home, it's literally right next to me all the time when I'm in my sewing space. 
That's wonderful. We had talked about seam rippers too, and I had mentioned that I love the Alex Anderson one, so a favorite tool, but we've got the seam fix one too. And this is nice where you have the seam ripper on one side, the bigger seam ripper on the other, but there's like a silicone. So <laughs> we all know, I'm gonna grab this for a quick second here. We all know that when we do our seam ripping, it leaves the little pieces of thread, the little stragglers. You can use this little silicone tip to almost rub it like an eraser and it removes those little pieces for you. Makes it a lot easier than trying to pick them out with your tweezers or with your fingers. You got a question on the spacing on the clips. For the binding, um, let's see. My little example here, how close am I putting them? I'd say I probably do about every three to four inches. So when we get to the binding, I'll show you that and then we can see the differences, but I would say about three, three to four inches. Great questions, guys. Priceless tools. Thank you, Cindy. I'm glad you're benefiting from this. Oh, I see Karen. Yes, the Wonder Clips are our best thing for doing binding. They're super handy. They're also great when you are doing bag making. Can you tell I also love to make bags? Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're tools that I use. Uh, yeah, I like doing quilts, garment sewing, and bag making. So those are the three things that I enjoy. I would love to hear what you guys like sewing. Are we all quilters here today? Looks so good. I'm glad that you're doing the diagonal lines across instead of hiding them in with the stitch. Yeah. Itch. <laughs> oh, I do have this one. Oh, yep. no. Yeah, just this and that one. Yep. Okay. One more. So I had mentioned that we are going to do a giveaway at the end, and I wasn't going to tell you what it was until we got closer, but while she's doing her quilting, just want to show you here. We have this awesome book from Schmetz. It's the ABC Pocket Guide. This is such a handy little resource to have in your sewing space. It is going to um, show you what type of needle, the different sizes, what material to use with it. And actually, Brian, can you do the overhead camera again? Because I want to show both of these together. Thank you. We're going to sneak over here really quickly. Just going to scooch this. So it's the ABC Pocket Guide. And then I'm just gonna open it up so you can see a couple here. It's going to tell you the differences on the tips for your needles, like we were just talking about with the Microtex and the quilting. The tip is going to be different than your universal. It's gonna penetrate that fabric nicely. It shows you the anatomy of your needle. I love this little picture because it shows you for the eye of your needle what it normally looks like and then how the embroidery needles eye is bigger and then the metallic is longer. And we were just talking about this the other day that people get really frustrated when they're using a metallic thread because it breaks all the time. It's super important that you use the correct needle because you need that longer eye so there's no friction and then it won't, um, it won't break. So super handy. And then here's another example all the details and then at the back it shows you what type of fabric you can choose your fabric and then it'll tell you what type of needle and what size it's a great resource and then here we're also going to give away the quilting pack here so you get get a luggage tag which is super cute that has the color code chart for the schmetz needles and then you get these five packs of needles that are all wonderful for quilting. So you've got your universal needle just to, you know, for your standard. Jeans and denim, that will also work well if you're working with a really thick quilt and you need something a little bit more substantial. Top stitch needle, and as I mentioned before, the quilting and the Microtex. So I hope you enjoy this little gift. And this one values at $30.99. You can go ahead and put it back, Brian. Thank you. 
So keep on commenting and we will select a winner of this great bundle at the end. We can all use needles, right? You're oh. doing such a great job, Alex. Oh, thanks, Trisha. <laughs> so are you. Thanks. Love it. Coming through. All right, let's take a look and see if there are any questions. I know I had mentioned it before, but for those of you that are just popping on, we are going to be doing So Creative Live Spring Social, which is a virtual sewing event, and that's going to be April 4th through the 7th. And Chris Marcini is going to be doing a Quilting 101, and I am so pumped for his segment, too. So I got a, a reply this morning from him. You did? It's it's Marquini. Yeah. We've been pronouncing his last name wrong. It's Marquini? Yes. Okay. I am sorry, Chris. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, Chris Marquini. <laughs> oh, I'm glad that we checked with him because now I feel bad that we were saying it wrong. <laughs> Janine, love needles. Yes, we all love those needles. It is amazing how much better results you get when you work when you're using the proper needle. If you follow our TikTok, I shared one a while back where I was like, I'm just gonna do a really quick project. And I didn't wanna change my needle. I was using a faux leather and I had a universal needle in my machine. <laughs> and I'm like, this is a really, really quick project. I'm just gonna leave my universal needle in. Yeah, don't do that because mm -hmm. I didn't change it out and I snapped my needle and that's scary. So make sure you use the right one. <laughs> I do not like that feeling at all. You've not encountered that yet. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you don't. <laughs> if you wanna throw it in the comments, guys, let me know if you've broken your needle because it's pretty scary. Am I gonna do this little corner too, right there? Let's see. On the diagonal? Yes, you will. Okay. That'll be my last one. Wonderful. I love this, Sherry. She said, the right tools make the job easy. You are correct. That's a good slogan. We're gonna we're gonna make a Facebook post on that, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, it's going on a post. <laughs> <laughs> Alex has been doing a lot of our posts lately. So if you follow us on our Facebook or Instagram, she'll be making those cute posts. All right, I think you've got it. Awesome. Last tiny little block. We've got a question right here. Alrighty. So generally you do have to roll the quilt to help with the bulk, but with something this small, um, it's fine. And you can go from the other direction. That's fine too, as long as it's pinned. So you're not going to shift it. Um, yeah, you could. Long way around that answer. <laughs> Her question. One more little yeah, at straight this point, line. Could I just turn it this way? Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. Just make sure. It's so on that side. with her question, the only thing with doing that is you need to sew on this side of the tape, right? Mm -hmm. So this is going to put the tape underneath the, um, the presser foot. So that may not work very well okay. for this application because it might be too slippery. I see. And because this is your first quilt, I'm not going to have you try that just because I don't don't want it to cause any issues, but we could definitely try it in the future. Okay. But because she's using the tape, it may be a little bit too slippery. I've always just done it where it's next to it. See Lombard breaking a needle often. <laughs> oh, it's so scary when that happens. I've done it twice. So like that's all I want to do. No more. The first time I did it, I broke it on a twin needle because yay me, I did not change out my needle plate. My, I left my straight stitch needle plate in and I put a twin needle in. That's not going to work. <laughs> so just make sure that you do switch it out for the appropriate plate. And then the other time was with my leather needle when I should have switched it out to the leather needle and I didn't. Thank you. 
Kayla just put she hates breaking needles. Always when I'm trying to carefully sew over a pin. Yeah, you might do that with your English paper piece, and I'm interested on that, but like I try not to sew over pins. Like the only time I do is if it's literally an accident because I'm so scared to break my needle. Oh, Paula said that doesn't work. I'm thinking she's probably talking about sewing, having the presser foot over the tape. So mm. is that what you're talking about, Paula? Thank you for confirming if that's the case, because I think it would just be too slippery. Virginia wants to know if you could just put the tape on the other side. I think um, that, well, we could probably do that, but um, take a little thought before we do it, right? <laughs> Oh, here's a good question that I know you're going to want to answer. What's the benefit of using a straight stitch plate? <laughs> okay, I love using a straight straight stitch plate, even though I can't say it. But so the straight stitch plate has a smaller hole where the needle goes down into your machine. And it doesn't have the wide opening um, like you would normally see if like you were going to do a zigzag stitch. The straight stitch only has that little hole just large enough for the needle. So your fabric doesn't get sucked into the plate. Have you ever had that happen where it's like a lighter fabric and it just gets sucked in and then you ruin the corner of your fabric. It's really frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, it's also actually great to use when you're quilting because oftentimes when you're piecing, you have to start right at the edge and you don't want that piece of your quilt to get stuck or sucked in. And then also if you pair it with a straight stitch foot, the bottom of a straight stitch foot is flat. So it makes more contact with your feed dogs and you just get a really nice stitch. Can you, can you tell I get excited about a yeah. straight stitch plate? I like it. <laughs> I, I love them. I actually use mine quite often and um, just neglect doing a zigzag stitch. I just go straight stitch quite a bit. <laughs> so we'll talk about that more later. <laughs> but great question. And she just put, that's why I never use a straight plate for breaking it. Yeah. We just have to be a little mindful. We got to think that through, right? But anytime you swap your plate too, I do like to still use my hand wheel and rotate it towards me really slowly. Make sure my needle is in the proper position. If you're in a, or using a straight stitch machine, it doesn't change position ever. So you're fine that way. But if you have a machine that is capable of doing both straight stitch and zigzag, you just want to make sure that your needle's coming down in the appropriate spot. Do we have a beginner's quilting class online? Oh, let's see. English paper piecing is by hand. Foundation paper piecing is machine. See, Kayla, this is why I'm so excited about your class. <laughs> That's a great explanation. English paper piecing. Yeah, and she's going to be showing us English paper piecing in our, during the Sew Creative Live. Do you have a beginner's class online? I'm super glad that you've asked this, Sharon. This is actually on our list to make tutorials for. So we currently have the beginner's guide to sewing, beginner's guide to serging, beginner's guide to embroidery, and I've got it on our list to do beginner's guide to quilting. So if you guys are interested in that, I would love a comment, a yay, do it, <laughs> to encourage us to get, get the ball rolling on that. Did we make it? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, it. sweet. So we're going to hold it up and show you our beautiful quilting. There we go. You can kind of see that in through. Isn't that beautiful? Awesome. Okay. So now we did base the one side and we're going to go ahead and base around the other sides and then we're going to trim it. Okay. So let's go ahead and put that under and I will have you can't do that. I've got tape on my foot. <laughs> I'm going to get back my little bobbin thread again. Yeah, I was going to say let's just do the one side, but if we're going to do the binding, I think we we better do it right, right? <laughs> yes. All right, guys. Thank you. Yeah, we've got yes, do it. Nice. Please do it. All right, guys. We're going to have to circle back to that and do the beginner's guide to quilting. Then I can use my handy dandy overlays that I made that I'm not using right now yeah. with our instructions. <laughs> Be like, this is what we need to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Brian, if you don't mind reminding me at the end that I can put each one of those up, that way we can 
Uh, make sure everybody has each individual step that you need to do in this process. Thank you. And I don't have to start this like off the edge or anything, right? Nope. You just need to come a little bit in, make sure your fabric's not bent over, you're good. And then if you just want to make sure that your needle's going to be falling in the correct spot, lower that first. Let's go a little closer to the edge. There you go. Okay. Now lower it. Again, this is going to be hidden in the binding, so you're just pretty much tacking it down. Yeah, and when we do the beginner's guide to quilting, we'll note like the different um, stitch lengths to do and what types of quilting there is and um, all sorts of fun information. Another one that I would love to do a class on is the free motion sewing. So what she's doing right now is straight line sewing. With free motion sewing, you change a few settings on your machine. You're going to, number one, drop your feed dogs. You actually do not want feed dogs at all because what they do is help your fabric move along, right? It's pulling it along. But with dropping your feed dogs, it allows you to freely move your fabric. So you drop your feed dogs, you put your stitch length to zero, which I know sounds really weird, but you're going to be in control of how long your stitch length is by how fast you move your fabric. And then um, you would also switch out your foot to an embroidery foot. It can be also called a darning foot or a quilting foot, but we have a bunch of them on our website. So if you need any help finding them, we can definitely help you with that. Um, but that is a whole lot of fun. Uh, it works out really, really well if you have a flat surface like we're doing today where you lower your machine down and have an acrylic table. That's going to have a level surface when you're moving your, your project around. You can also get like extension tables as well. Um, you technically can do it without an extension table, but I will tell you it's a little difficult. But it's more like doodling on your machine with your sewing machine. Or excuse me, doodling on your quilt with your sewing machine. <laughs> There we go. We've got something really exciting. What's that? That has to do with free motion quilting. Which what? Are you to talking about right. Karen? To your right. To my right? Yeah. Where are we? Where are we? We're going to be putting it together while we're in. While we're <gasps> oh! <laughs> oh, now I'm excited. Yes. Free motion. So over here, I can't move my camera, but over here we have the Grace frame. We've got the Evolution frame. I should say from Grace, along with the Cunique 16X Elite long or mid arm machine. We are so, so pumped to get that set up in here. Yeah, I was like looking over at the comments. I'm like, what am I, what am I excited about, Brian? <laughs> yeah, we are super excited. Once we get it set up after we're done with So Creative Live. Yeah. If anybody wants to see it, let us know. Yes, if you guys are interested in seeing our setup once we get it all put together, please let us know. I know I was going to say give us a thumbs up. I don't think you can do that in the chat here, but yeah, give us a shout out because it's going to be a whole lot of fun. We have the cutie with the Juki machine on it. So um, if you've seen any of our videos before on So Creative Live, we had demonstrations on the cutie, which is a tabletop frame. You can pair that with a mid arm or a long arm machine, or you can use it with your domestic machine. You just have to get uh, a caddy essentially, and then you can place your machine on that. So we have that set up, but now we're gonna do the evolution hoop style, or excuse me, the evolution hoop frame with the 16X Elite. Uh, Cunique machine. So, you want me to go all the way around? Yes, please. Okay. Sorry, I got to chat and <laughs> just want to make sure. <laughs> You're doing great. Yeah, thanks for reminding me of that, Brian. Paula just said that's an amazing machine. Oh, you have the 15 Pro and absolutely love it. Yes, Grace makes a wonderful product. That's a Cunique model. Yeah, so if you're in the market for one of those machines, you're going to want to check us out on um, So Creative Live because we're going to have some amazing specials on the machines and the frames and actually some more goodies too. So you want to check that out. Well, and we're going to be, do we want to say? Do, do we want to say what? Prize day one. Oh. We should say it. We should let them know. You, you want to put it in the ticker? <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty cool. We have some amazing prizes coming up for So Creative Live. Not going to lie. So he's going to put just on day one. On day four, we're going to be giving a lot, or giving away the Baby Lock Triumph. So that's going to be fun. That alone is worth $7,500. Yeah. 
And you don't have to do anything special to get entered either. All you have to do is watch our live and then comment on a special word, which we'll share with you mm -hmm. on the day of the event. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of people asking how much the event is going to be to join, and it's totally free. Asking how much it costs to join? Oh, Brian just mentioned that he's been seeing questions asking how much it costs to join our event, our So Creative Live event, and it doesn't cost anything. You can join us from our Facebook page, our YouTube, and actually it'll be streaming on our website as well, sewingpartsonline.com, and all you have to do is comment on the special word during the segment that we're on and it'll get you entered. And then we'll be doing a giveaway at the end of each segment. So every single segment that we have, we're going to be giving away something and it's going to range like pretty, well, all of them are pretty significant prizes really <laughs> between what we've donated and then what our sponsors have donated and our guests. Like we have some really, really awesome prizes that are coming your way. So I really hope that you can join us for that. Oh yeah, there, Brian put the ticker up at the bottom here. Um, so he, he just said, just between us, we haven't really announced it too much yet. But for day one of So Creative Live, we're doing that Grace 16X mid-arm quilting machine, the cutie frame, so that's the cutie tabletop frame. And then you also get the five foot light bar bundle. That's over $6,700 on the grand prize for that day. Oh, so, so fun. Oh. <laughs> Karen just said, just make sure that you have a whole lot of snacks around. You don't wanna miss anything. Very, very good point. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to have some awesome demonstrations and we have several sew alongs. So in addition to Chris is doing um, his um, quilting 101 and then, excuse me, Kayla is doing English paper piecing and we've got Courtney doing two projects. She's doing like a little mug holder and then she's doing some petite baskets. So those are sew alongs as well. And then Chelsea, our friend, she's going to be sewing a garment and talking about some of her favorite notions. We've got some of our goodies with arrow furniture, we've got Juki and Janome and Baby Lock and yeah, it's it's gonna be so much fun. We are very, very excited about it. Paula just said, I will be watching. Thank you, Paula. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, are we just one more side left? Yep. Good job. On the last one. Your daughter's gonna be so proud of you. <laughs> Look what I made. She's been asking me to teach her how to sew, and I'm like, you gotta wait just a little bit. Just <laughs> give me a minute. Oh, maybe we'll need to get her like a baby lock joy or something. Yeah. Uh, she'll be sewing next to you. Uh, Susan Bard wants to know if we have the schedule posted. I went ahead and put the link in the comments. Thank you for that. Yes, we have it posted. And then here's another good question. Yes, does it matter which way to turn the wheel to bring down the needle? Yes, you always want to turn that um, hand wheel towards you. So don't turn it back. It's going to mess up the hook in the machine. Very good question. The other thing, too, is you may find when you stop sewing and you lift up your presser foot and go to pull your fabric away and it's like stuck. You can't get it pulled out. So the reason that it does that is because it hasn't made a full rotation in your machine and your needle's not in the highest position. So that's when you always want to make sure that you rotate that hand wheel towards you and get that needle in the highest position. That's going to complete the rotation in the hook system and be able to remove your, your fabric. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I had it stuck one day and I was like, what am I doing wrong when I first started? Oh my goodness, I was so frustrated. And then it's like, just complete that rotation. So, so good. Oh, here's a great question. Do you have small sewing machines for children? Now we used to carry a mini option, but we found it to be more beneficial to start with a basic mechanical machine. And we have some great, great options. I just mentioned the Baby Lock Joy. That is a wonderful starter machine. There are some machines that have a finger guide um, and then I should say 
they used to have them. A lot of them don't have them anymore, but we have a special foot. It's a generic low shank foot that you can put on your machine that has a finger guard on there for children as well. I would highly recommend also getting that if you get them a machine um, to start learning. So maybe we should do a series for children. Oh, that would oh. be amazing. I, I, oh, yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah, tell me put one in the comments if they want to see that. Please put a one in the comments if you want to see a children's version, a beginner's guide to sewing for children. That that makes my heart happy. I think we should do that. I love that. And we can give it to your daughter. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm, now I'm all like ideas <laughs> in my brain. <laughs> awesome. We see some ones. Great. Yes. Oh, I think that's awesome. That would be really fun. Okay. That's going on the list. To do. <laughs> okay, so we have been using the scissors for the majority of this project. So now we're going to have you use that ruler and the rotary cutter. So we can just trim all this off now that you did such a wonderful job quilting. You can go ahead and remove all your pins. Okay. And this is why I do really like a long ruler also. So we're going to have to do a big long cut. So she'll just have to use one ruler instead of having to try to do it with a short ruler. So if you're looking to only get, you know, one mat and one ruler, go with the long ruler. Do I have that little container? Here we go. We'll do this one right here. You can throw them in there. Anybody else have some questions? Oh, I love all these ones, you guys. Virginia, Cindy, Patricia. Jennifer, awesome. Yeah, I'm glad you guys are excited about that idea as well. I'm definitely going to have to look into that. Some machine suggestions. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Here's some good advice. Watch your hand placement when using a rotary cutter, yes. And we actually have a segment on So Creative Live coming up in April uh, on TrueCut. So they have a really, really cool system. It's a unique cutting system where it has a little ledge on the side of the ruler. And then there's a little lip on your actual rotary cutter and it connects together to keep it in place so you don't accidentally slip. So I would definitely tune into that segment as well. It's really, really cool. Okay, okay we good? Yep. So we wanna make sure that our quilt is on our rotary bat or on our mat, I should say. Yep. And then you're going to just place it on the edge okay. and we're gonna cut that off. And which one would you like to use? We have a variety. Are you going with the 45? The cute one? So. Are you going with the cute one too? Um, which, which one do you recommend? <laughs> I personally like the Quilter Select because it feels it. really good. Now, it can be a little confusing to open initially, but it's actually really cool. You hit this button and use your finger to pull that up. Oh, and okay. then when you're done, you just click it, hold this, and click it back. Oh, okay. So. Nice. There you go. Make sure you hold it like this and watch out for that blade. Okay. <laughs> and then right on the edge there, right? Yep. Okay. We're just trimming off all the excess. Ready? Yep. So we wanted that extra bit of fabric and batting uh, available in case it kind of shrunk with doing our quilting. So you usually have more shrinkage if you're doing like free motion or doing stippling where you've got a lot of quilting on the top. So right now we're a little excessive on the amount that we had extra, but that's okay. Better safe than sorry. Those scraps are perfect for jelly roll rugs. There you go. Yeah, they would be awesome. You could also make like a, a little hot mitt too. I believe this particular batting is the the microwave the microwavable option. You can make those bowl cozies. You can just use scrappy ones. Watch the pretty fingers. <laughs> I do need those. Nah. To edit YouTube's. <laughs> Yeah, she does our editing and she's doing a great job. At the beginning, I had mentioned that Alex is new to our marketing team and new to sewing. So she's she's a, got a lot of new experiences with us here at Sewing Parts Online. <laughs> and she's doing great. <laughs> you guys are wonderful. Thanks. 
Oh, uh, Jennifer just said she can't go back to using a regular rotary cutter after using TrueCut. <laughs> it's a pretty awesome product, that's for sure. Courtney Gobro loves the rulers. Yes. Because they have the holes in them. Yep. Yeah, Courtney is going to be joining us on our So Creative Live as well. If you um, follow, or I should say, if you have a TikTok, you should go follow her. She is under So Excited. She has some great stuff too. And she's got some great tutorials. Do you want the little scissors or are you good? A little extra, <laughs> extra, extra. Thanks for sticking with us guys. I know we've been at it for a little while. But you're going to see Alex complete her first quilt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's a great question. So how do you um, combine the batting strips in order to use them again? So we've got a little TikTok on this, and I believe it's on our YouTube channel as well. But this is another perfect, perfect place for this stitch in a ditch foot to be used. If you want to go to the overhead camera... I'm going to show you an example with this scrap here. It's so nice to be able to use up your scraps. So let's just say you had these two pieces, right? You would place them right up next to each other. And then you would have your stitch in a ditch foot again with that guide directly in the middle, right? And in this case, instead of doing a straight stitch, Let's see, can you see that okay, Brian? Yeah. Should I move this down a little bit? I don't know, I think we're good. Okay, so we would have it like this. So instead of doing a straight stitch and stitching directly behind that guide, you would switch your machine to a zigzag stitch. And then you would go back and forth and just tack these together. It would just be a zigzag all the way down and it holds it together really nicely and you're able to make a brand new piece. Great, great tip. My tummy's making noises, sorry guys. <laughs> I guess I'm hungry. <laughs> all right, go ahead. There we go. All right, so it's all trimmed. Look at that. So now Alex has put together her top, her Yay! batting, and her backing. And now we just have to do binding, okay? Oh. So when we talk about binding, all that is, is we are going to take a strip of fabric and we are going to use it to cover the raw edge of our quilt, right? We don't want to see that batting. We want to make it look nice and pretty. And Brian, if you want to do the overhead camera once again, I'm going to show a close-up view here. So this is the binding. It's going to cover that raw edge, encase it all in there, and make it pretty. Okay. So there's different things that you can do. Um, you can get some pre-made binding. We have that available on our website, different sizes that you can get different sizes, different colors. We could do a whole segment on that as well because there's single fold, double fold, and we can talk about that. But today we are going to make our own binding because that's always super handy. So what you do is you make long, this one's my scrap one, excuse me. You take these long strips, they're two and a half inch strips, and Alex went ahead and cut these yesterday, so we did that portion of it. But you take two and a half inch strips and you connect them, and then you make one really long strip and you are able to attach it around your quilt, okay? I am going to have you do the overhead camera again there, Brian. I'm gonna show you a little example here. Alex, if you wanna peek, come on over here so you yep. can see as well. So when you have your long strips, what you want to do is you would place your one strip here and then you would take your other strip, put them pretty sides together, and you place them at a 90 degree angle. And then what we're going to be doing is sewing from this corner to this corner. And then once you open it up, it's going to give you a long strip, right? So let's say we did the 90 degrees like this. And then if I may have a couple pins here, we're gonna place those here. And then you wanna take a little ruler, this handy dandy one from OmniGrid is awesome. It's the perfect size. It, you just go from that corner to corner, 
can take your marking tool and place a line just like that. And then you pin, you don't have to be any place in particular other than that it's out of the way of your presser foot. Because we have a walking foot, that's a little bit larger than your regular presser foot. Excuse me, there we go. So we're gonna put it back here just a smidge. So then we're gonna go ahead and sew directly on that line, corner to corner, and then we'll trim off this excess. So as an example, I've got here. So this is showing what it would look like after sewing it at a quarter inch, trimming it, and then you open it up, and you're gonna have a straight line. So you want extra um, binding. I generally do not get into the math of it because that's the one thing that uh, prevented me from quilting for a <laughs> while. <laughs> if you wanna go back to the other camera, Brian. I don't do the math of it. What I usually do is I make my binding, make it extra long and then have just a lot extra. So we had already prepped some here. I'll show you. So we did, we combined all those strips and put them together. And then you just fold them in half and press them. And Alex went ahead and did that this morning. So I just guess, and then I just make sure that I have extra. I just place it around here and go, okay, am I gonna have enough like of these? Like that, and then you have extra tails here to connect. So we have a couple of really cool tools that will help you with finding. One is this binding tool, and we have a little video. If you want to pop that up, Brian. This thing is really cool. Um, you can go to our YouTube and watch how to use the binding tool. Sarah used to be with Sewing Parts Online. She did an awesome video that walks you through the steps of connecting those tails at the end. But in the meantime, what we are going to do is show you now. I'm gonna have you do the overhead camera again, Brian. We're gonna take Alex's beautiful quilt. I'm gonna show you here. So you always want extra. I always like doing about 12 inches or so. And then you start in the middle of your quilt. You don't wanna start on a corner. And then what you're going to do is attach the raw edge of your binding with the raw edge of your quilt. And this is where those wonder clips come in super, super handy. Like this. Lack of these. And we were talking about before how many or how far apart you want these. I would say about three or four inches. Now that I'm looking at it just like that. Okay, so we go like that. And then I've got another little video that I'm gonna share with you in just a moment, but I do also wanna show you here as well. So Alex, if you wanna peek over here so you can see what we're doing. You, when you get to the edge here, you want to fold this back just like this. So the raw edge of your binding and the raw edge of your quilt are in line, right? And you're at, you formed a 45 degree angle. Then you fold this back once again so that it makes a square, just like that. And then the raw edge of the binding and the raw edge of the quilt match up on the side as well. And then this is where you would then clip it. So we're gonna show a short video that I made on how to do this and then we can move forward with the process. Attaching binding to your quilt and have no idea how to do the corner? Let me show you how to do it. With the raw edge of your binding matched up with the raw edge of your quilt, sew one quarter inch seam allowance. Sew up until you get one quarter inch from the edge of the quilt. 
Leave your needle down, lift up your foot, and pivot 45 degrees. You're going to sew right to the corner. Now you can lower your presser foot and sew. Okay, next part. Take your binding and fold it back at a 45 degree angle. See how the raw edge of the quilt and the raw edge of the binding are in a straight line? Now fold it back so that the raw edge of the binding and the raw edge of the quilt match. Notice that it's nice and even on the edges. Secure with clips and it's time to sew. Well, let's stop here and I'll show you what it looks like. Flip over the binding to cover the raw edges. On the back, fold the binding to cover the stitches. Make sure that you have a nice mitered corner and secure it with wonder clips. From the front of your quilt, sew in the ditch. By doing that, on the back, you'll be catching the binding. Like and follow for more sewing tips. Okay, we can go back to the other camera. Thank you, Brian. All right, so we are gonna go ahead and have Alex do that. We're gonna switch out back to the other foot though, because we don't need the walking foot at this point. Some people like to use it. Um, but I prefer using the regular foot in this application. Let's see, where did I put my little screwdriver? There it is. I'll get that swapped out for you. I made it look easier taking it off than putting <laughs> it on, right? <laughs> okay, now we just need the shank. Where did we set the shank? Scooching it over here. Well, did I misplace it? Here it is. There we go. We're gonna just put this back on the machine. I'm fumble fingers this morning, guys. <laughs> I'm curious as to what people call their shank. Because yeah. I've heard shank, I've heard ankle, I've heard presser foot holder, adapter. Yeah, that's actually a wonderful question. If you guys want to throw it in the comments and let us know what you call your presser foot holder. So what I just attached to the machine, that's going to be your shank or presser foot holder or ankle. <laughs> it's That's a great question. Okay, so we're going to just pop on the regular presser foot at this point. Now you can come on over. So in that video, I believe I had said you can do around a quarter inch all the way around. It just depends on how much you want to expose on the top of your quilt. So you can practice on scraps and figure out what you like. But with the two and a half inch binding, if you do three eighths of an inch seam allowance here, it usually folds over really nicely and you can still cover your stitches. But since you're just beginning, I think we should do a quarter inch just because that's going to allow you to have more fabric to fold over to the back and it'll be easier to catch it. So again, if you're just starting out and you want to make sure that you're able to easily um, do your binding, let's sew a quarter inch first, okay? Okay. And you know what? Since we are doing a quarter inch, let's go ahead and use the quarter inch foot. Again, just okay. to make it easier for you. We've got two good questions. I'll put the first one out. Okay. So with this particular method, I start on the front and then wrap it around to the back. There are different ways to attach your binding. Here's the second one. I went ahead and put it in the comments. Oh, yeah, we can definitely. Well, can we put it in the chat? Um, you could do the TikTok. I linked it to the YouTube short. Oh, that works too. Thank you so much. What do you want me to start? Oh, and I was just about to say, so when you're starting your binding, you want to leave a big hole, usually okay. about 12 inches. So you want to give yourself a lot of extra space. You have an extra tail. Okay. And then let's do, let's start about, let's actually remove it there. Okay, let's do it right there. Okay. A little bit more, there we go. Okay, so again, we're going to lower your presser foot to begin sewing make sure because we're switching feet we want to put everything in the proper position go ahead and put that to 2.5 okay and we are in center needle position slowly rotate your hand wheel towards you to make sure the needle is not going to hit the foot we're good we have our straight stitch perfect okay so you can start and then go ahead and reverse And now sew 
all the way to the, well, not all the way to the edge, almost to the edge, about a quarter inch away. And just to make it easier for you, if you want to stop for just a quick second, we're going to mark a quarter inch from the edge with our pen. Okay. And we're my little marker here. There you go. That way you know exactly where to stop. She's doing so great. <laughs> okay. So once you get to that line, you want to leave your needle in. Okay. And then we'll oh, do the next turn it. Yep, and then pivot. <laughs> Hang on. There's a lot happening right now. Making your oh, wait. Did I move it? Mm, just a little bit. I think you should be fine. It's just going to be that your binding is going to be pretty narrow in that section. So. Well, I think I moved where this is too. Okay. Oh, just, maybe not. Yeah, just compensate for it and buy or make sure it's a quarter inch. So you're going to be up a little bit further. Okay. That's just, one thing that you want to make sure that you do. Like if you do accidentally uh, move your fabric or, you know, it's not enough to pick with the seam ripper, let's think through what we have to do. We just need to be a quarter inch away. So she doesn't want to follow her previous line at that point. She wants to come up to her new line. Stop. There, there we go. Yep. So you're a quarter inch away, and then you want to leave your needle in and lift up your foot. Okay. And you're going to sew, you're going to turn your quilt so that it angled there. Now, because you have the quarter inch foot on, you have to kind of maneuver it a little bit. Okay. There you go. And now you're sewing directly to the corner. To the corner. Yep. Okay. And then you're just sewing off. So lower your foot and sew directly to the corner. There you go. Okay. okay. And then you can cut. cut. Okay. And this is where we're going to do that folding technique. So, okay. Okay. So now you can, I'll just give you some slack. There you go. Make that a 45 degree angle. Perfect. Okay. And then fold back. And make it squared. And then this is where you would put a couple of wonder clips on there. Okay. Should I clip up there? Yeah, maybe bring it just a little bit more. There you go. Okay. Or should I clip this here or here? Um, I'll do it right down here. here. Yep, down at the bottom. You just want to make sure. Yeah, that should be enough you, that you're able to put your foot underneath. Okay. Or excuse me, your foot on top. It's looking good. Everybody still commenting, making sure that you're in that giveaway at the end. <laughs> See, Lombard just put, you're doing great, Alex. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're doing awesome. This is great, learning all of this on live. Look at you go. <laughs> okay. All right, do I start from down here or across? So now you are starting right at the top here and you're gonna do a quarter inch all the way. So you just wanna make sure that you're starting right on the edge. Okay. And this is a great time to make sure that you have a tail. So make sure you have the, the bobbin thread pulled up in about four or five inches of thread. And what you're gonna to wanna to okay. do is lower that needle right on the corner here, but you're going to take your left hand and give your thread just a little tug as you get started because there's multiple layers of fabric there and it might have a, a little bit of an issue getting started. Okay. So there you go. Did you say to bring this down? Yeah, you good? can bring that down right on the corner. Okay. And then with your left hand, grab your thread that little thread tail. 
Oh, that's just your thread from before. Oh, okay. Your thread tail's right here. There oh, gotcha. Go. Yep. All right. And then we're going to move this just a smidge. Okay. okay. And now with, with your left hand, give that thread tail a little pull as you start. Okay. A little more pull. Pull, pull, pull. I snapped it. <laughs> so that's what I mean where sometimes it's a little tough to start. So you just, it feels like you're going to be pulling too hard, but you just need a little tug. So if you snapped it, we're going to just re-thread the machine. No big deal. Okay. okay. Go ahead and lift your foot up. Okay. And lift your needle up. Rotate towards you. All the, towards you. There you go. Ah. All the way up. Okay. And pull it out so you have that bobbin thread already there. We'll just do a little snip. Are you sure you snapped it? Yeah. Ooh, you have a good question. Are you sure you snapped it? Nope. You didn't snap it. <laughs> no, the thread. It. Oh, gotcha. I thought you meant you snapped it in the machine. We didn't no. even have to do that. Okay. You're good. Okay. So we'll go ahead and start it again. You can do it right on there. Oh, did I miss the magic word for today? Had to change clothes. So we're only doing that for So Creative Live. We'll be doing a, a special word on each segment. Today, super easy. All you have to do is comment. <laughs> You're already in. So we'll go ahead and pick the winner at the end. So if you're just joining, let me grab that packet here. We are gonna draw the winner for this awesome bundle. It is the ABC Pocket Guide Schmetz. It gives you all details of different types of needles, the anatomy of the needle, what fabric to use. You get this luggage tag that has the color code charts for the Schmetz needles. And you have five packs of needles that are perfect for quilting. You have universal, denim, top stitch, quilting, and Microtex. And this values at $30.99. I was thinking having coffee, but we're at lunchtime now. Yeah. <laughs> we're having pizza. Oh, we're having pizza today. Thank you, SPO. <laughs> I should say sewing parts online. We affectionately call it SPO. <laughs> So what kind of pizza are we having today? Papa John's. I love me some Papa John's. And then do I stop again? So a quarter inch away again. This is like moving. Okay. Yep. Here you go. Quarter inch. I get to talking and get distracted. Sorry. And so let's go a little bit more. We're going quarter inch from the edge. Maybe one more. If you think that it's going to go too much, you can always use your hand wheel to rotate a stitch at a time. There you go. And then stop. Nope, we're going to oh, now that's right. pivot. That's right. Yep, pivot, and then we're going to sew to the corner. Okay. Awesome. And Brian, while we're doing that, would you mind... Um, going through and putting each step on there. So anybody that watches this back can see each individual step. Just one by one? One by one, please, yes. Do we have some happy music? Okay, Let's do some happy music. <laughs> then you can go back and look these, or look at these uh, little steps. I love happy music. So good. You're a great teacher. Your daughter's going to be thrilled.
Thank you, Brian. Hopefully that'll be helpful. Then you can go back and look at all those steps when you make your first mini quilt. <laughs> By the way, I'm glad to hear that people remember about the surprise. Murder. I was just thinking the same thing. That's awesome. I that means you know, tuned in. <laughs> I want to know if they can guess what the theme of the word is. This oh. it's, it's spring social. So if anybody who remembers what the surprise words were at Christmas, what do you think the theme is this time? Mm -hmm. Which one are you looking for? Tweezers? One second. Well, hand, handy dandy tweezers. Here we go. There we are. <laughs> have to have them next to you. Yeah, Brian was just saying that he's so thrilled that people remembered about the special word during our lives. So our upcoming So Creative Live is going to be spring themed. It's called the Spring Social. So what do you think our special word will be or words, the theme of our special words will be? There we go. I'm trying to get there. <laughs> Trisha needs pizza. I need pizza or coffee. <laughs> I don't get hangry. I just can't talk. That's all. <laughs> oh. Do we have any guesses? Oh, I'm going back to whether we call it a presser foot holder or a shank. Here we go. Curly says shank. <laughs> we do have some guesses. Oh, do we have some? Let's see. I'm going to scroll down and take a peek. Oh, Maureen! <laughs> Spring flowers, you guys. Maureen, Cindy, yes. We are going to be doing flowers. So on each segment, we are going to be doing a giveaway. So you're going to want to tune in for the whole segment. And as she had mentioned before, grab some snacks because you don't want to miss it because these prizes are going to be awesome. Marsha won a prize last time. Marsha, yay, she won something. Hey, can you let us know what you won? I wish I could remember all of them. We gave so many things away. I can't remember everybody. <laughs> I remember your name, though. Flowers, birds. Oh, birds would have been a great one, too. We are doing flowers. Look who it is. <laughs> I can buy myself flowers. Hi, Chris. <laughs> so now I am sorry if you were on before. I didn't realize we were pronouncing your last name incorrectly. I am so sorry. Oh, but Chris is going to be popping on our So Creative Live and doing a segment on Quilting 101. So we're super, super pumped about that. Oh. Marshall, want a gift card. Want a gift card? Yay. Then you can buy all the tools that you want, right? Maybe it's the rotary cutter that we were talking about. <laughs> Look at you go. You didn't even have to ask on that one. <laughs> She's getting it. I'm figuring it out. <laughs> Love it. So close. All right. Yeah, at this point, I'm going to show on my little makeshift one here. Do you want to switch to the overhead camera, Brian? So what is, she, or what she's working on, since you can't see the close-up view, we're doing this here. So she is sewing up to the corner. Well, I already did that twisted, sorry. Let me make sure I show you here. Okay. There we are. So she's sewing to the corner up to a quarter inch, and then she's pivoting and sewing from this point to the corner of the fabric. And then we do the fold, and then fold back. Make this a lot nice or a lot neater, <laughs> and then continue to sew here. And then once she does that, this is what we have right here. And then you're able to fold this over like that to cover the raw edge. And you're able to do a nice mitered corner. So after you get it all situated, this is where the clips come in handy. And then from the front, you can use that stitch in the ditch foot just like this and sew in that ditch so you can't see it on the top, but it catches on the bottom. So that'll be the next step. Thanks, Brian. So now 
you don't want to do the whole thing. You want to leave about 12 inches. Are we on the end, the last one? Oh, not quite. I thought we were on the last part. Here's what Marsha got with the gift card. Your first ruler and cutting mat. Yay! So are you on team ruler and or ruler and cutting mat versus the scissors? <laughs> it's hard to go back once you've been using them. I still like to use my shears if I'm doing some garment sewing, but I even use my rotary cutter and mat for garment sewing too when I'm doing patterns. I'm watching here. So close. Okay, and did we share the link for the binding tool? I believe Rachel did, yeah. Okay, awesome. So what I think we'll do here, because I want to um, get some pictures <laughs> to share on our uh, social media of her finished quilt and her process of doing the binding. So after she is just about done here, then what we'll do is go ahead and do our giveaway. And then if you want to check out our video on using the binding tool, that way you can see exactly how you would complete it. And then we've got a few other helpful videos on our YouTube as well. And then I'm going to share the finished results on our Facebook. Oopsies. So close. Yeah, because I want to take pictures so you can see the see the steps on this. Okay. All righty. Oh, did you find one that you like? <laughs> <laughs> oh shucks, Alex put in the pedal to the metal. <laughs> I'm getting it now. Getting She's feeling comfortable. <laughs> it's like driving oh. a car. Well, we're working on getting an overhead camera. So next time what we'll do is be able to have the overhead camera so you can see the process of finishing the binding. But I want to take some pictures so you actually can see those steps because she's doing such a great job. But so where we'll will I finish. stop? Finish. So we want at least 12 inches open. So we have almost that. So I would say, you know, Move just that do down. it. Yep. Okay. When you're using the binding tool, you want at least 12 inches between your tails. But um, it, there's other methods for connecting your binding. So, but I usually like to just have quite a bit extra. All right. While you're doing that, let's see if we have any more questions. <laughs> funny. Paula said she bought the binding tool from us. Yes, it's a handy little tool. Very handy. And again, we have that YouTube video that Sarah did. Um, and I believe it's called How to Attach Binding Edges maybe, or Ends. But if you look or search binding on our YouTube, it comes up. Oh, Brian's looking it up for us right now. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> Teamwork. Yeah. There you go. Let's actually reverse. Stop there. Reverse stitch. Yeah. So you want extra. Okay. Okay. And then you can cut. Connect binding ends easily. That's what it's called. Awesome, Alex. Yeah. That's so great. Okay, so this little tool, what it does is Alex has now sewn the binding all the way around her little quilt, and you see the tails hanging off, right? So that video shows you up close how to attach these tails to make them fit nicely together so you don't have a lot of extra fabric, and that way, when you turn it over, you'll be, you wanna hold that side up. It 
gets it so you can connect the tail so it's nice and flat just like the other edges. So then when you fold it over like that, everything will look beautiful. Interesting. Just like that. So when you were sewing, I was explaining, if you want to hold it just right there, I was explaining now what you can do is sew in the ditch here and it's essentially hidden mm -hmm. in that seam, but it catches on the back hmm. and it fin finishes beautiful edges. So we are going to go ahead and do this off screen and take some pictures of Alex finishing her quilt and sharing it with you all on social media. But yeah, before we leave, we are going to do a giveaway. So Brian, we want to go ahead and pull that up. Ready? We're ready. Let's go ahead and pick our winner. We are doing this beautiful bundle. Let's get some needles. Who's it going to be? Janine, congratulations, Janine. To claim your prize, if you just want to email us at marketing at sewingpartsonline.com. Do you want to go ahead and put that in the ticker, Brian? Yeah, let me fix it. I, I had to go to the link tree to let me change it. Oh, that's fine, too. Either way. Yeah, that way you can just email me directly and we'll we'll get you taken care of and get this shipped out right away for you. That's wonderful. So I just have to say congratulations, Alex. This is amazing. Thanks, Trisha. I'm so excited. I can't wait to take pictures. We're going to put a bunch on. <laughs> she's going to finish it up today. Don't look and too closely. Oh, girl. it looks so kidding. good. This is, this is her first quilt, you guys, and you stayed for it. It was It's awesome. Congratulations, yeah. Alex. Thanks for being an amazing teacher, Trisha. Thank you. And thanks for being a, a good sport. You really took it on took on the challenge and <laughs> made a quilt in front of everybody. <laughs> well, thank you guys all so much for joining us and make sure to keep an eye out for all of our So Creative Live stuff coming up. We are excited for you to all join and we're excited that you're going to come and look for that special word, right? Look for those flowers. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful day and have a good lunch. <laughs>